Bonsoir et bienvenue au Flash Aha. Avec moi est mon ami Ricard Vacances. Bonsoir, Ricard. Ça va? What are you talking about? <laughs> You're right, Dickie. Oh, I'm good. How are you? Yes, excellent. And joining us this week, month, time, we have the journalist and casual fiction writer who is relatively new to actually letting anyone read her creative work. It's Stephanie. Hi, everyone. I'm not very good at the button, sorry. <laughs> and we have an author whose historical works explores immigrant stories in early 19th century Scotland and struggles for agency in uh, Gilded Age America. She has published five novels, including Revenant's trilogy about a Scottish family emigrating to Canada in the 1820s. Margaret is also a proud fo founder and co-organiser of the Jola Backerflod PDX, an Icelandic themed book festival in Portland, Oregon, which is amazing. Most people just settle for the lack of Icelandic themed book festivals and don't do anything about it. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much, Martin. Ça va assez bien, merci. Bonsoir. Merci beaucoup. Right, this is Flash Aha, as you may have gathered from the French. We will be writing Flash Fiction this evening. We are going to... No, we won't, because we haven't introduced Colin. <laughs> and now we quit the stream. <laughs> and, uh, are, you, are you so unfair at this? I get, <laughs> I get hung up on Icelandic words. We have the prominent sculpture and author who is here tonight, Colin Clark. All right, yeah, I'm here now. Thank you. Part of the Brit pack. Mm. How do I get rid of this? I like it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, that was, that was chaotic, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I can now see why Martin does the introductions. <laughs> well, he just doesn't do yours, isn't it? Yeah, 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 it's just class. Just class. But you just can't get him to stop talking. <laughs> well, when you get into Icelandic fiction, he just goes. Phew. Good. Is it a particularly Icelandic way of uh, theming books, or is it uh, for specifically Icelandic books? Neither. It's because it's around Christmas, and it's um, to celebrate the introvert tradition of exchanging books as gifts and going home to read them with a cup of hot chocolate because you don't need a people. That's the excellent part of it. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. <laughs> right? I can get on board with that. The idea of sitting quietly on my own over Christmas. Like, yes, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is, as you may have gathered, was good chat, an evening <laughs> with Colin Clark. <laughs> <laughs> Colin, oh, I, I hope you don't feel snubbed. Hang on, just an evening? Dear. Yeah, uh -huh. How's it arrows? Yeah, believe me, it's enough for anyone, Richard. Yes. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Off to, a, off to a flying start as ever, aren't we? So, we are going to come up with a theme. We are going to do some writing. We are going to chat about it and do some moral writing. And, if you're still with us, we're going to read some short stories. Yeah. Some first draft of short stories. Yeah. Even more yeah. a dynamic. First draft of flash fiction, in fact. What could go wrong? Richard, dish out the themes. Uh, oh, geez. Well, that's <laughs> really well. um, themes, oh. themes, themes, themes. Just, can people just start saying random words to me, please? Washing machine. Ooh. Trains. Ooh. <laughs> Washing. Pigeons. Abandoned what was that, sorry? Abandoned tractors. Bridges. Those are the best kinds of tractors. <laughs> oh, I, li I like bridges. That's a bridge too far. <laughs> Never fail. Well, I, I tell you, on, on the subject of uh, bridges, Colin, you are my arch enemy. I'm your arch enemy now, am I? Why? <laughs> No, no, Don't no. tell him. Keep him in <laughs> suspense. <laughs> no, I think, I think, 
Oh, Lord. That was good. That was good. That was, was, that was so quick. Yeah. This is, I'm, I'm awesome. impressed. Stand up comedy, definitely. <gasps> We've got a viewer. Yeah, I think it's Bethany, too. It is the most votorsome viewer known to the universe, Bethany. She's kicked you off the of Discord and now she's getting you off YouTube. <laughs> she kicked me off the of Discord. She threatened to kick me off the of Discord. There's a, there's a big difference there. We all know it's coming. Okay. Wow. <gasps> it's here. Dan's here. He's probably using every single megabit of his terrible internet to be here, so it's nice to see you. Thank you. Did you sort those themes out, Richard? What things? It's Natalie themes. Locke. Yo. Lock, stock, and two smoking barrels. I'm going to get myself so, locked up, aren't I? If you have a prompt you'd like us to write about, put it in the chat. It's like improv theatre, but without that annoying guy who's always asking you to come to his improv shows and you don't want to be, you don't want to tell him. <laughs> <laughs> I've never actually been asked to go to improv theatre, but I can understand the, the, the reluctance to do that. Well, I you did. Have to um, who does improv, Richard? Have, have, we've, got, we've got to stop the show for a minute. Well, well, well. My, my, my. Here. You've got oh. some nerve showing your face here. After yeah, all I'm, all after all. <laughs> I'm not in a good way. <laughs> I've told all the stories, Barrett, but in the pre-show, all the stories. Oh, no, we, we know some things that I, I would pay not to know at this point. <laughs> Bethany, I think Bethany's right about a granny. That's what I like to see. I like that. So good to see so many friends in one place. Well, just you wait. Just you wait. Yeah, it's Brian's fault. You know that. I blame Brian. Margaret saying hello to Barrett with a literal emoji of a ship. <laughs> so, we, so we've got probably got washing machine. Washing machine uh, granny. That no, I'd watch that movie. Ooh. Yes, I'm sure. Washing machine, like granny it. pigeon. I'm quite, I'm quite liking the idea of an abandoned tractor. It's quite attractive. Oh, dear. Yeah. It's right. It's right. It's right. Um, Granny's um, secret in her family recipe. That reminds me of a prompt I did just recently. Oh, hello. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining Hi, this. Hi, Haley's World. This, 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 this thing that we're all involved in that we can't get out of. Yeah, I quite like this Granny's secret in her family recipe because that could go many places. Yeah, even into an abandoned tractor under a bridge where pigeons uh, roost. And covered by a train carrying washing machines. Yeah. It's my stream. I don't have to get out. No, it's the rest of us who are fighting to get out, Bethany. Believe me. Oh, dear. <laughs> But we've signed the contract now. There's no escape. Yeah, yeah I now own every one of you. <laughs> if you would like to be owned by me, make sure that you subscribe <laughs> to my newsletter. The link is in the description below. Why is that in a folder? Do you keep it in like an A4 binder and get it no. out when you have a stream? It rather suggests that you have many copies. Quality, so I have to keep it in a little plastic just to keep it also, why is it in Comic Sans? Uh, that was a monster. Benjamin T. Mills. I was trying to wind him up. And you know how little the print is, right? Nobody could see it. It's big enough. The I can see newsletter. I can't see the actual. Can't Here's see one. Oh, well. Can't see okay, one. well, I might need to rethink the sign. I'm going to put it on the feedback list. Make sign bigger. <laughs> it's okay. I was just blinking for Bethany. She said, blink twice if you need help. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you were the only one, Colin. <laughs> no. You need to blink in Morse code. Yes, we need blinking help here at the moment. Right, how are we doing? Uh, for yeah, blink and you'll miss it, all the fun we're having. Actually, well, I, use, I use Comic Sans to write sometimes. Yeah, That's well, a thing, you, isn't you, it? You do write, you do yeah. write some graphic pieces, um, um, whatever your name is, Colin. Right, your name is Colin. Yeah, well, I never got introduced, so you wouldn't know. See, this man has some. 
This guy knows what he's talking about, about fonts. Yeah. Dan is literally a font of knowledge on the subject of fonts. He must, does, are you saying he knows so much about fonts that he knows they're actually called typefaces? <laughs> He's just blown my world, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, you're just a type, aren't you? Yeah. Yes, me. Comic Sans really helps when you're stuck. It just takes your mind off what you're writing because it looks so when you were, So did you write all of Mars in Comic Sans? Uh, no, I actually booped that long end on paper. Oh, oh, dearie me, a bit like last week because I started that one. That I just put in the flash prompt, I started that when we were doing the live stream by mm -hmm. hand. It's good for the bare so, bones. Do people feel we've got some ideas of where we could uh, go with these? Suggestions? Like, I, think, I, think, I think Natalie's prompt is, is kind of like a good one. Like, mm -hmm. I like this one. Mm -hmm. Granny's secret in her family recipe. That could go, yeah. Mm. Mm. What do we all that, think? That's it. Vote taken. Uh, <laughs> well, just made the decision. This is not a democracy, Colin Clark. <laughs> I was expected to be dictated to, so yeah, I'm yeah. good. I'm good with that. Well, it was bound to happen. Um, what can, what can I say apart from I've made the decision on behalf of everyone? Oh, this was this was better. I need to call him Garrett there for some strange reason. <laughs> call him Barnabas, or you know, what's another name beginning with B? Um, not Brian, Benjamin T. Milne. Um, but... you know, they could be one and the same people, you never know, you never see them both at the same time. <laughs> What was your? I'm not, I'm not sure if this is. A, I'm not sure if this is a, is a prompt or a reply to a comment. He has feelings, I'm sure. Maybe I think he was about Comic Sans, and ben then he has feelings about Comic Sans. Yeah, I think it's about Benjamin having feelings on the choice of font. Yes. Oh my goodness! Yes, three of us have said it, so I think that's true. <laughs> yeah. that was that fun. about um, Benjamin and Comic Sans? I think it might have been Martin. Well spotted. Oh, okay. Yeet. Yeet. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think we've crossed that bridge. <laughs> oh, Is there an abandoned tractor under it? Uh, yeah, we're sort of chugging along like a broken tra tractor at the moment, aren't we? Are we going to get genre assignments? Yeah, are we gonna... They are right. <laughs> Yes. There's, there's quite a lot to unpack from that comment, so we won't go there. <laughs> Dicky, issue for genres. Oh, right. Oh, I've got to do the thing now. Or at go least get your genre box and. Uh, are we still going around. with the Granny's recipe theme? I think the theme is going to be whatever it is. I am just talking to fill out time while I copy and paste the thing. <laughs> Granny's secret. Not obvious. Not obvious at all. Granny okay. recipe. That was a very granny voice um, there, Colin. That's Thank just you his very voice. Much. You can't say that, Richard. <laughs> yes, yes, we are all writing in comic sans. And you know what? We're going to be proud of that thing. We're not going to fight. We're going to fight against the stigma against comic sans. We're going to we're going to embrace it like a like a cactus. Yes, and we're, uh, I'm going to release my new Comic Sans book on fitness and health. Uh, I'm going to Are ask, you going to be on the cover, Colin? Yeah, I'm actually trying to get a pair of budgie smugglers as we speak, but I'm going to ask Chris if he's got a pair of spare. At the end of the day, I still have to be married to my graphic designing husband, so I will not be writing in Comic Sans. Because <laughs> <laughs> he will divorce me. For that. <laughs> oh, look you you can Google compensate by showing him the uh, title right. sequence to Flash Aha. <laughs> See, this is one of the many reasons I, I just think Google Docs is the tool of the devil. It defaults to Arial. Ugh, jeez Louise. Well, I use Arial to write in all the time, Richard. I use Arial to uh, <laughs> uh, wash, my, wash my clothes. Oh. I would hit my Richard. head on the desk, but it's too far <laughs> down. Richard is rather Helvetica or uh, GTFO. I, 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 I want to say I have standards. I have twisted standards, but standards nonetheless. Golly good. 
Stephanie, has your husband watched the Helvetica documentary? No. He hasn't lived! I heard it. <laughs> I don't have access to it. I don't know where it would be, but I've heard it recommended to me a long time ago. Richard, we've bought you plenty of time. Have you those genres ready? Yes, dear. I was on the bus the other day and I got a meme from uh, Chris Kenny. I was just like, hey, hey, Chris Kenny knows who I am. And that will be why his second book's delayed. <laughs> Barrett, you haven't lived until you've watched a, a programme about funds. You know, it's literally, you know, gripping. Oh, boy. And Dan no says, area is not your type. This, this, this is very true. <laughs> I saw a brilliant documentary about uh, kinographs, um, which is how they used to make newspapers before everything went digital, and how you now have these machines that you can't give away, and the people who restore them and uh, still use them, um, which is highly recommended. Not- I mean, at least we're not talking about Gil Sen, which would be a bit of a horror story, really, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's not actually funny. Let's move swiftly on. <laughs> Let's move swiftly along to issuing the genres. Oh. So we are going to, I'm going to go with the lovely ladies first, because I'm a gentleman, among many things. And Richard, you can't gonna... say that anymore. It's 2021. Yeah, mm-hmm. misogynist. I don't know. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's not how misogyny works, but we'll go there. <laughs> yeah, but you get one. Be quiet, one. the men are speaking. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so we're going to go with who wants to go first out of the lo- lovely, lovely ladies, Margaret and Stephanie. I will. That's fine. Okay, that's fine. Okay, good. Oh, it's a random thing. Got Colin it. could be a lovely lady if he so choose. We're very Colin welcoming. Her. Colleen. No, no, having, having, having dressed up as one once, I can assure you I am not a lovely lady in any way, shape or form. <laughs> Although I do look like my mother. That's, is, that, is that an insult against your mother? Yeah, not really. It's just realistic and true. Okay, so we are going to, um, you know, buckle our pants for the revelation of the first genre. So, Stephanie, you are going to be writing... A thriller. Oh, <laughs> might be bad. <laughs> and then really, gonna, really good. So next, Margaret, you're going to be writing a historical. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are the odds? You, Margaret. Okay. <laughs> Why is it packing? And the next one, Colin, you're writing comedy. Oh, super! All right. Uh, Martin is writing sci-fi. How do you make it always do that? I don't know. That's no, okay. I'll it. roll with it. And I'm like, because I'm like, you're like, writing, like, writing romance. This has gone. This has gone wrong. I'm supposed to be writing romance. <laughs> Good heavens, heavens to murder Troy's, as they would say. Um, <laughs> Barry wants to see pictures, or it didn't happen. Uh, yes, Barrett, I do have a picture somewhere and I am going to post it because it probably you're print it off and post it to him as like a no, I'm going to post it online where everyone can see it. Thanks. It was during a play I was doing, I was playing an old woman as well as a young man. I thought you meant the picture. Hello, Eva. Eva. Hey, Eva. Just in time. Give them all the artificial sweetener. <laughs> Why do you think artificial sweetener? It's got to be, it's got to be, got to be, you know, real sugar. It's got to go all natural. Gary yep. is here. Oh, Gary is here. I love how Martin just immediately dismissed Gary's comment as soon as I clicked on it. <laughs> no, no, no. Then I am always playing an old woman. I'll say. <laughs> uh, yeah, Eva. It's a picture of me dressed up as an old woman. While I was doing a play, Eva was asking. She didn't know which picture we were talking about. So. I thought we were talking about the budgie smugglers one, to be honest. Oh, good God, no! They don't. They don't actually make budgie smugglers for my sort of age, do they? They'd be more like knee gatherers. <laughs> 
We've got some people here who look like they're desperately trying to work out what budgie smugglers could be, but as soon as they realise, they wish they hadn't. Uh, no comment, he said. Yeah, no comment I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it to the, to the audience's imagination, shall we? Good. So where do we go from here, boss? Oh, well, of course, of course he knows what they look like. <laughs> the lesson well, he's, about your he's smuggled a few really budgies in his time, hasn't he? So <laughs> those poor birds. <laughs> <laughs> he smothered those budgies with his pecker. Oh no! Nah, see, now you always take it one step too far, don't you? This is your problem. Get out, Richard. <laughs> He's getting pretty as we speak. Wow. Dear me. And he is sorted. <laughs> no anymore. I'm gonna I'm gonna oh, oh hang on, did you mute me on my own stream? <laughs> See what happens, Martin, when I give you admin privileges. <laughs> oh man, this is anyway, right. Should we go for How a like a god? So do we know where we're going with our with our prompts, do we reckon? So we all know what our genres are. No, no idea yet. I'll find out in a minute. At the risk of, uh, <laughs> at the well, risk of discussing another of uh, Barrett's favourite topics, I'm going to pants this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Poor Barrett. He never knew what was going to hit him when he overbooked himself. <laughs> yep. Do you remember when we were so respectful of him first time round? <laughs> oh, my God, we've got Barrett Laurie here. We have got the man, the myth, the legend that is Barrett Laurie. And then, you know, we've just kind of given up any pretense of... Now we're just like, <laughs> Barrett likes under things. <laughs> I love the cheers in the chat for the mute button. That was, that was the best one. I think we've all heard about what Barrett can take. See, I knew that was coming, Barrett. You knew it was coming. Yeah, well, we, 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 I, I've, I've heard plenty. Thank you very much. Double rat, random um, I've actually never read that play. I mean, I've actually got. Oh, well, yeah, there definitely is something. I've got this complete work of William moment. Shakespeare, and I'll just blow the dust off it. <laughs> oh, it's my God. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't Sorry? I thought you were joking, but now we know you weren't. <laughs> Did dust actually come off of it then? <laughs> yes, lots of dust. <laughs> Yeah, well, this probably killed someone with that. That's why he's reading it. Well, actually, we've all subbed about 20 times each just to get him up near the 100. Then we're all going to remove our fake subscriptions. <laughs> I got to send that and I'm like thinking, someone must really hate me to give, but it's actually starting to fade. It's actually... Yeah, you've had it in the window with the sunlight, haven't you? Well, I don't I was going to say, I'm sorry, I live in the East Coast Portland, but not really. There is an East Coast Portland. I just live in the... It just looks like a Bible on the inside. Do you live in Maine, Stephanie? No, I live in Pittsburgh, which is oh. like as gray as... Got it. Yeah, yeah. Cold. And the UK. I don't know why they think there's sunlight there either. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why we I definitely yeah. saw some this year. I really did. Not tonight, though. It's howling a gal and pouring with rain and hammering off the windows. As always. You're missing out. <laughs> Dear me. Well, we're not going to be writing about Shakespeare. But we See, will we, be we writing. What we write Eventually. Writing. Let's go and do the writing. Have you Yay, got the he got the hint. The sprint? <laughs> but I'm just getting the time up now. If you, if you... Again. To me. <laughs> Oh, are we ready? When you are. Uh, are you going to start it from 10 instead of... Yes, Colin, I'm going to start it from 10. Should I start it at 9.59 just to annoy Stephanie, you? Stephanie, get your husband. He's going to love this. <laughs> <laughs> He's not allowed in here when I'm doing live. He talks a lot. Standards. Is this, is this actually going to bother people if I start it from it, 9.59? It'll be, it'll be well impressed with the uh, texture layer. See, look, I can... Uh, I can control time. 
<laughs> oh, you're like that lady on Doctor Who. What? What, the assistant? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Right, are we all ready, uh, folks and folkettes? I probably can't even say that either. So. No, you can't, but never mind. I'm just going to mute myself down before I incriminate myself with more um, terrible things to say. Okay, hang on. I, I have to say this is, this is proper literature. <laughs> oh God, I'm totally right. But, okay. On your marks, get set, right. That means go. What's the prompt again?
And that's time. Oh, thanks, God. How are we all diddly doing? I do new. It was much faster than I thought it would be. Yeah, I just to work that line into my romance. Actually, I managed to get 182 words of red heart chick flick down on the page. <laughs> How many words have you got, Colin? Uh, 222. I mean, I did start again halfway through. No, I'll be doing that next sprint. <laughs> well, I kind of got up and I thought, oh, shit, this idea's going nowhere. And I thought, ooh, that's an idea. <laughs> I do I've know got... what the secret is in the recipe. I'm just getting to that. <clears throat> I'm uh, trying to leave trying to leave that to uh, the audience imagination. Well, that's no fun. I want to know how Margaret and Stephanie got on. So do I. I have 321 words. Wow. But I don't know. That? I don't know if I know the secret yet. Well, now you're looking for the secret. But okay. you're not going to find it. You're not really looking. You want to be fooled. Sorry, that was uh, Michael Caine in The Prestige. Oh, is that what it was? Uh, I think Margaret is, in fact, still muted. Sorry. Don't you need a watch to, like, hypnotize someone as you say that? <laughs> I thought you were just calling me a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> As if. I mean, I mean, plenty have, Martin, haven't they? Plenty have. Well, you repeatedly doesn't make oh, plenty. Martin wrote 111 words. Woohoo! Ah, this is wonderful. If you want to have uh, Dickie Holiday read your flash fiction, send it in after the next sprint, and uh, it will be read out loud. I just want to say anyone can read these, not just me. But you want it to be Dickie, don't you? Everyone yeah. wants it to be me. <laughs> I don't know. I've heard Colin read stories. I want Colin to read everything I write. <laughs> Thank you so much. Colin me. has such a fantastic reading voice. That you could yeah, listen if to if only all those people on ACX agreed with you. No. I'd keep getting yes answers instead of, you haven't got this audition, but never mind. <laughs> and have you uh, set up your uh, audio book gig on Fiverr? <laughs> no, I haven't got on Fiverr yet or any of the others. I'm just on ACX at the moment. Colin, you need to sort of sell your abilities, you know. You've got a real, you know, we can have your gravelly, you know, dulcet tones everywhere. Yeah, but it's an acquired taste for voice. Gravelly dulcet, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how that works either, Margaret, but I'm sure <laughs> it doesn't have to work. We can, we can fix it in, in editing. That's the good thing about it. Uh, just write down some absolute <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Uh, I you don't have to it. come here to be insulted, you know. I can go anywhere. <laughs> okay, but you chose to come here and you still get insulted. I did indeed. I that chose not, not, to, not to do a live stream tonight. There we go. You cannot just go anywhere, Colin, because you never get insulted on CGL. Oh, that's very right. true. That is very true. Everyone on CGL is very nice and supportive. Just a plug. Well, unless Richard's on there, of course. Hang on. I was guest hosting and I was, no, I was nice to you. They were actually very, as always. I just jest. You do. I just jest. That's almost as bad as I do do. <laughs> okay, uh, I nearly called him Colin for a second, but he's come up with our, our our Randy our... vacation. <laughs> Calvin Buck. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Marvin <laughs> Serafina <laughs> Beluga <laughs> and Marianne Panache okay. can read my drivel. <laughs> I thought the Panache was something you put in a chocolate cake. Oh, it's Ganache. Yes, yes. Calvin Bach. I like that Calvin one. Calvin Bach. Yes. My other nickname Stephanie was Montague Hugo, Hugo, Hugo Snood Senior. But that's okay. That Barrett is a real bitch. <laughs> he only wrote that so that you would say it out loud. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, now he can clip that and use it as like his ringtone or his text alert. Yeah. <laughs> um, that Barrett is I'll real... get you next time, Barrett Laurie. Next time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he'd have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those pesky kids. Pesky writers. 
would have gotten away with it all those pesky potholes. <laughs> oh, so, Margaret, are you happy with your uh, how your flash is going? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's always how it is at this point. It's um, a bit of silliness, and I just thought I kept going. Wait, we're going to have two <laughs> sessions to do this, so I need to be only halfway yeah. through. So I was just trying to judge, you know. <laughs> like the poet Bon Jovi once said, "We're halfway there." Whoa. Yeah. I also am completely <laughs> aware. Did he, or did he say? What's that? Oh, said, Whoa. That's I'm completely aware of the faces I make while I'm writing. <laughs> my yeah, uh, my wife is actually a Bon Jovi scholar, so I can get her to uh, make a ruling if need be. I think it's halfway there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Musical interlude, back end book junk. Huh. Book okay. junk. I mean, that just sounds rude. That doesn't just it? sounds like an old boat in China that's full of books, doesn't it? Really? I did actually uh, do one of uh, Colin's uh, sprint streams, and I was dictating whilst muted, and uh, someone came on and was just like, <laughs> "I can't hear anything. This is terrible. Why is this broken?" <laughs> I think it was Ellen. Everyone would like to go on one, wouldn't they? Yes. I'm not sure why we aren't using Dick Vacation. Well, I've been on one of those for donkey's years either. There's no use to go on another one. <laughs> oh, we've lowered the tone, haven't we? We have indeed. Yeah. Welcome to the Brit Pack. <laughs> the American version of his day, mate. I never quite understood why Richard went into Dick. No, no one answered that. No, no. no Barrett, Barrett has told us actually. He's probably like no, thrown his laptop off the ground by this point. I'm not going to answer that, but I'm going to say that there's a similar declension from Margaret to Maggie to Meg to Peg. And when I was growing up, I was Peggy. So it's it's a thing. Now, don't wow. tell me. Don't try to explain Henry to Hank. That that makes no sense to me. It's a bit like um, what's it? Unless it's rhyming slang, of course. And Emily's from London. Yeah. Now, Barrett's got a whole playlist talking about his back matter. If you check out his channel, <laughs> Barrett, don't talk about ladies' other goodies. You get yourself cancelled. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Now, we all know what happened in that graveyard, Barrett. You said it on that stream, didn't you? Is this the stream I've got to go back to listen to yet? You definitely <laughs> did. Oh, the one with, um, with, with Chubbs and Annie. <laughs> Being Chris and Amelia, I presume. That was funny. I actually went back and listened to that. Yeah, it's good. Yes, I was supposed to. I haven't been anywhere near YouTube for days. So, mm. other than in and out. You tell me about how did it happen? No Thanksgiving as an excuse. What have you been up to, Colin? Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. No, I haven't been doing Thanksgiving, obviously. I've just been drinking red wine and having a great time. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Oh, she's muted. Mm. I don't actually know this story. Stephanie knows I got caught in the I don't know with. who. I don't know either. You can text me, Barrett. I have my phone right next to me. I'll tell you, Barrett and Trixie should speak because she has some stories about graveyards in Newcastle. A, I have nothing Ooh, to do. Heard the, uh, heard Most the, uh, haunted. Oh, Henry, also to Henry. Look to above that comment. <laughs> Barry, <laughs> tell us the story. Yeah, tell us the story. Tell us the story. Oh, yeah, I've got to get my voice notes out. Oh, yes, you've got to actually decide when we're doing our second sprint. Single one since all week, you know. I'm very, very personally offended. You know, he's had his he's had his family round in his two bedroom, two okay. condo. <laughs> I, now, really. I I now have the answer to this, and I my brain is blown, just gone. I don't I know how I'm gonna finish. Minutes. I don't know how I'm gonna finish writing. We just need the entire book with backstory. This uh, <laughs> and back matter. matter. I have, back yes, matter. yes. Back matter, indeed, and women's other goodies. <laughs> I'm not writing that kind of romance, Colin. I'll have you know. Oh, you're not. That'll make a change. There's I mean, no... I have, I have no um... seals, no otters, 
Uh, right, shall we uh, I, I, I have, have another sprint? <laughs> It's Martin trying to get us back on track. That is. It is. Yeah, it, I did attempt earlier, but it doesn't work with me. But Martin is the co host. So there we go. He's the co host. Oh. The co most. Co most. Oh, oh, it's Paddington. I mean, that is about as British as, you know, what other, what other things are British? Tea. Rupert. Um, I believe Rupert. he's Peruvian, Richard. <laughs> he is. What? Richard. Yes, he, what are you talking about? Yes, he is, indeed. Oh. And also, or are you saying that uh, immigrants can be the most British of all of us? Of course they can. Yes. Why not? Very good. So, well, yes. so, so Martin, we were talking about another sprint, were we? Yes. Everyone. <laughs> oh, well, started. Uh, nah, you can tell us the professional outlet, isn't it? Outlet. professionals, the but not at this. <laughs> You're seeing I'm a professional at anything. <laughs> oh, you work dear. in Asda, don't you? What? In the past life, I did. In the past life, I literally tapped my bum for um, for money. Yes, and as did I, Richard. I worked for them as well. So. Oh dear. Many years ago. I know. We we, we both lived in the green, didn't we? I did. Did. Every They're little... talking about Walmart. Well, the British equivalent. <laughs> I know. I thought you said Canasta. I think he said Kinasda. Ah, okay. Thank you. Canasta being a game, Asda being a shop like Walmart. Okay. Yeah. Got it now. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we, Martin, do you want to do the thing where you count down to the writing? Okay. We will be writing in one second. Oh. Young man,
and that's time. Oh, I need more minutes. Yes, we all need more minutes. Just getting to the juicy part of this one. Also, Martin has a cat. Yes, we know. A French cat. A French cat who's very cute and very well behaved, usually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dearie me, dearie me, dearie me. How do we all get on? Good. I didn't know what I was going to write. And then I tried writing something thinking it wouldn't work, and then it sort of worked. It's How about, about the rest the, of you? Yeah, it's about the story of my writing life. How about over <laughs> to Stephanie and Margaret first? Well, I made it six hundred and thirty-two words. I don't know if it really I don't know if the story really ends, but we got what we got. Yeah. Hey. And if mine is ending now, it's uh it's definitely taking a turn. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to mix up all the genres. Make everybody happy. Hey, Shannon. Yeah. Hi, Shannon. No, I've got 478, and no, mine hasn't ended. But hey, I've got 480, and I'm about on the cusp of an ending. Mm -hmm. So. 606. That was 606. My word. Isn't that not the number of the devil? No, that's 666. Oh. Oh, now. Mind you, it depends on the dialing code, of course, where you're dialing depends from. Depends on the devil. <laughs> it does. Ooh. The devil's in the detail. So if he's in detail, the the code's totally different from if he's in London. And it's 020. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what are we doing now, chaps? We've got another it's two sprints to go, so I can finish this off. <laughs> Do we? No. I thought you said we had two. Yeah, we yes, do. Colin is cheekily trying to uh, oh, oh, okay. alter the format. Yeah, are we trying to angle for time. another sprint? We know Colin right. loves his sprints. Is he trying to angle for a third sprint? Well, I'm not trying to angle. I just suggested I'm not trying to change your format that you have on Flash Aha, but a third <laughs> sprint would be damned handy. That would be me trying to <laughs> angle. <laughs> Now, if you have written a flash fiction that you would like read out here on this stream right now, there's details down below on where to send it. There is indeed. Oh, there are indeed. I don't know what that should be, but never mind. Right, got to figure out this Google Docs routine. Or just email submissions at richardholiday.co.uk. You really should uh, register... Uh, dickyholiday.com just to make sure people don't get confused. <laughs> if you submit, you're actually automatically subscribing to my newsletter. That's oh, against the terms honest. of service. <laughs> huh. Very secret. Let's just say that. Let's see. Oh, Google Docs, please. Thank you. Google Docs is truly... Actually, I really, I, I'm really getting to like Google Docs for doing my writing in. It's just that I keep forgetting to download it and go to copy and paste from the document. That doesn't work. Just help if I actually um, open my inbox, doesn't it? I figured out your OneDrive, and it works. Ooh. Well. Wow. What? What is going on? <laughs> you thought it would be simpler if there was a hundred ways to submit rather than one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah I've got to find it Hold up a minute. <laughs> knowing me, knowing you. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And here we are. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, okay, so where's Dicky on my list? Here he is. Let's Excuse me. Look. I'm trying to find a Dicky on I my list. I should be at the top of your Christmas list, Colin. Oh, it's not the Christmas list. It's oh, everybody I've got on Gmail with different emails and ting. You have to remember, Colin, you've got two lists. You've got the ones who've been naughty as well as the ones who've been nice. <laughs> yeah. Strangely enough, strangely enough, Richard's only on one of those. As long as it's not a list of, of, of uh, arrest suspects. <laughs> Aren't those lists one and the same? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> who wrote the recipe again? 
You did the OneDrive? Sorry, I'm confused. I did the OneDrive, Stephanie. Oh, good. I'm going to do the, uh, I don't know, submissions at Richard Holiday Drivey thingy, whatever. Stephanie Bethes. I need an assistant. You've got one. Don't, don't pick Brian. No, don't. He's <laughs> terrible. Get in the bin. Yeah, I'm about how to do this. <laughs> Well, we've got an uh, affirmation from the Queen of Flesh. We're all doing great. Ooh, love her. Yes, yeah, she, she hasn't read any of them yet, of course. That, that's the worry. Hold up. What's going on here? Cha. Oh, Downloads. Oh, got it. There we are. Bing. Ooh, my goodness, my I've managed to attach it. It's coming to submissions at... Richie Dicky Holiday dot co dot UK. <laughs> Almost like a Holly Jolly Holiday. <laughs> jolly Holly. Dicky no, Dicky holiday. holiday. Yes. I watched a very jolly holiday movie last night. It's called Santa's Sleigh. Hmm. I watched Come from Away last night, and that was delightful. It is delightful. Oh, so so good. Who are we missing? Colin Someone's Hart. asked me to do a podcast on the movie Christmas in Connecticut. Christmas in Connecticut. Which is this brilliant 40s film about a lady who is a magazine writer in New York who pretends to live on a farm in Connecticut. And her editor thinks it would be a good idea to send some uh, uh, service personnel who've been evacuated <laughs> from the war to stay with her for Christmas so she has to quickly get access to a farm that she can pretend to live in and hilarity ensues mm. and half a bit players from Casablanca are in it which makes me very happy Interesting mm. oh my so, It's like no, the original uh, Christmas movie Hmm? It said it's like the original Hallmark Christmas movie That's a US thing yeah. Oh no, my wife watches those and comments oh. how the men wear red and the women wear blue green. What? Yeah, Sanders Sleigh was just about a killer Santa Claus. <laughs> right, any more submissions? I've got the following ones. I've got Stephanie. Uh, I don't know where the mouse has gone. There is. <laughs> got Margaret. I've got Martin Lejeune. Colin Clark. Hey, it's that guy I am. Lee. Got me. Yeah, yeah. Who am I missing? We're missing whoever's submitting from our chat. Well, Natalie Locke has submitted something on Instagram. Hey! I never thought I would. Yeah, Natalie Locke play. original. Oh, that's very good. Okay, right. Um, right. Shall we commence the readings? Why not? Okay. I will do that once I've figured out how to share the screen. Would anyone then... like to go first? Mm -mm 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 -mm. No, but I will go first if I It's have going to be me again, isn't it? Hooray. No, it's going to be the lovely, the amazing, the illuminating Not Stephanie. Um, right, just... When you figure out how to share the screen. Listen. I know how it is. I know how this feels now, Richard. I, I, you have nothing but my sympathy. You're a season I mean, uh, pro. This is yeah, why I just I also, your, your live. Yeah. I don't have to run any myself. Yeah, this is this is this is terrifying. Ooh, ooh! Well, Can we see that? Do we need it bigger? Well, just just about. Bigger. I think we need it a bit bigger. Doesn't make it any bigger. No, that just <laughs> makes it wider, Richard. That just gives me, yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay. Stephanie, it's all over to you. All right. Uh, except that is not me. What? Oh, no, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Only you could put somebody else's name on the piece you've written. Like, I don't remember writing. Uh, oh, art, sometimes art. I, I think I am actually in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, no one's told me yet. What's going on? 
we've we've done this just enough times. I'm like, let's approach people who are actually half decent writers who will, you know, write something good. And then you go and embarrass me. And how can you shame me in front of new people? <laughs> Does that sound a bit better than Stephanie? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. That's it. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, over to you then. Uh, the room I'm in it smells faintly like mildew. I reckon I'm in a basement. As I blink, my eyes adjust to the darkness. I can see concrete blo blocks where drywall should be. The floor is dirt. My bare feet can feel the slime of a worm slither over it. I'm tied up, but I can't remember how I got here. The last thing I remember was waking up in my bed and going to the showers. Was that yesterday? The sun shone through the window earlier than normal yesterday. I remember because it woke me up before my alarm did. I stumbled from my twin-sized bed in my dorm room to the bathroom. I splashed water on my face and grabbed my shower kit. The showers were down the hall. Since it was so early, I didn't have to fight anyone for the shower, but as I washed my hair, I heard the door to the shower room swing open. That's the last I remember but my hair is dry, so it's been a few hours at least. I'm back in the same clothes I wore down to the shower. Someone must have dressed me. Help! Where am I? Who has me? I hear someone walking downstairs. The doorknob squeaks as, it, as someone turns it and the door creaks open. Who are you? I see a shadow move toward me, then disappear. Suddenly everything is black again, but this time I'm awake. Help! I scream again. I can smell something cooking. I'm not sure what it is, but the smell of wood burning is permeating the room. I hear a familiar voice from a distance humming a tune I've heard before. Where have I heard that? I can feel someone touching my legs while the familiar voice hums. The hand sliding down my leg is cold. Their skin is thin. I can practically feel their bones running down my calf. They grab my left foot out of the dirt floor. I start to thrash my leg, hoping to get loose, but a strong hand grips my knee and I'm frozen in place. There's someone else in here. I feel a small pinch to my foot. Suddenly, the area around my toes is numb. I hear the breaking of a bone. I can't tell what they've done, but I start to feel woozy. My eyes close and I drift away to darkness. When I come to again, the numbness is starting to wear off and the pain at my pinky toe hits me. It's the same pain as when I stub my toe against my dresser, sharp and pulsing. I can still hear a woman humming in the distance. Wait, I recognize this song. It's the song my mother used to sing to me as a child anytime my grandmother was at our home. My grandma died when I was 10. I don't think my mom has sung that tune since then. I feel a pinch again, this time to my arm. I drift off again. Someone has given me something. The blindfold is removed from my eyes. Shadows appear in the corner of the room. As they move closer, I realize I recognize one of them. Mom, what's going on? Where am I? I'm crying. I don't know what's going to happen to me here, but I don't think it's going to be good. My mom is drinking something. It's steaming. I wonder if that's what was cooking. She starts humming again as the second shadow moves in front of me. Grandma? But you died. I was at your funeral. One day you'll learn this recipe too, she said as she sipped a cup. It's the reason I'm still alive and the reason your mother will always live. Oh, bravo. <laughs> and quite, quite dark. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this comment. I, nice. I, I mean, listen. I've told you guys a hundred times on CGL that I'm like sunshine and rainbows, and the mm -hmm. last like four stories I've written have been this darker, darker. I don't know what's that going was, on. That was gripping. I kind of also really like the tense change, um, kind of like part way through to the sort of present tense. That kind of really up the kind of like thriller aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really good. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. Really uh, like nice. that. Immortality origin. I like that. It's cool. <laughs> It was very atmospheric. Definitely. I thought the first person really added a sort of Ooh, factor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, how do you spell that? W-H-H-H-K. Uh, -H -H <laughs> <laughs> oh, lady in seminary is writing that. Nice. Okay. I think we're off to a strong start, so we're going for the next piece, which is... Now, who, sure who's time... piece is it going to be? Who knows? It is literally pin the tail on the writer tonight. Yes, and I thought it was Devin who came out with that one, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Dickie. Margaret, is this actually your story? Just confirm it is actually your yes, story. Yes. 
Do I have to read it off of that, or can I read it off of my bigger screen? You can read it off your screen. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I won't take it personally, but fine. <laughs> That's fine. Ready? Mm -hmm. Mary gazed at the heart of the leaflet. No, wrong age. She found another plant stalk and peered into the depths. Certainly not infested with aphids. The third one, though, it had potential. She sniffed, sniffed, snipped off the ball of pollen and flicked it into the bag of oak galls, ready for dousing in water and straining with the black dust. She knew, she knew this time it would work. For how many years had she made this secret magic ink using the whore thistle thorn that opened at the right phase of the moon? 42, 34, since before she was married, before she'd born six children, before she'd lost three more to plague. But one of them would grow to maturity and write something powerful. She was sure of it. She'd been told by a wise woman, a conjure woman, when she was just a girl. So much power, the woman had said, as she held her hand at the edge of the forest. Two of Mary's children had already birthed children of their own, one boy and two girls. The girls were too young to write, but the eldest boy had started chicken scratching with quills, and despairing of her own children, Mary's hope now rested with her grands. This boy, Alexander, would come to visit next week. Mary made sure the ink was ready, and she had a scheme to get him away from her daughter to get him to write. When he did, the ink worked well, but that had happened before, and nothing had come of the substance of the words. The work had to have both. Mary trembled as she watched him, only seven, but scratching happily away. A sort of tapping sensation in her heart started up again, and she had to lay down. She was getting older, her heart failing. When she woke and could no longer feel the sensation, she went to find her grandson, Alexander. He was in the barn, talking excitedly to his father, a quiet man who oversaw the horses of the hostelry. Not much of a son-in-law for someone who had been taught to look for power. But one never knew how it would manifest. Granny, it's magic. He came to her in the doorway, away from the horses she distrusted. Is it, my boy? What makes you say that? His father watched her from above, a broad bay back. What I, what is happening? Is it? Go on and show us. Have you shown your daddy? Yes, but he doesn't believe me. I cured that horse right there, but did he now? She cocked her head toward the man but who let out, who only let out a forbearing sigh. Come show me another one, she said, and beckoned him with a hand. They went out into the field of wild sedge by the river. Now, write something you want to come true, she coaxed. The boy dipped the quill into the ink pot he'd set on the ground, refreshing the supply of her precious work. He pressed the paper to a tree stump, well-aged and dry. I am old enough to drive a fancy carriage, he pronounced, and before her eyes the thin light through the clouds blazed, leaving her blind. For a moment, was it? No, for she was still unable to see. The day still bore a little breeze, but she couldn't hear the movements of her grandson. Alexander, what's happened? But the blindness had turned to smells, damp, rot, and decay. Mary was below ground. Oh, <laughs> oh I love it. So good. Yeah. That was juicy. Yeah. Yeah. I went witchy. I don't know. It's the season, I think. Yeah, I, I like that. That That's was really just good. bewitchingly good. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Description. Super. As they say in London, that were wicked. Mm. Do, okay. they, do they really say that in London now? It's, it's like a witch thing. I, I, think it's, I think it's a Boston thing. Wicked. There you go. Wicked. Loved it. I think that's the first time I've read anything I've written on YouTube. It's terrifying, isn't it? Well, it certainly it's certainly should be terrible. a lot. <laughs> Uh, that would be a very rude thing to say, Martin. No, it's terrifying. Yeah. I kind of just want to read more of that because that's just. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's the mark of good flash fiction when I just want the rest of the. The novel. I want to read the whole book of this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was just so atmospheric, and you really got a sense of the place and the time. Mm -hmm. When did you think it was? Um, was 1600s. Yeah, sort thinking. of salami, salami, salami. Yeah, I was thinking. Oh, yeah, I totally salami. felt like salami Ireland. Is a of sausage. Stephanie, I felt Ireland oh. in it. 
I just finished reading Hamnet. So I was actually from the Shakespeare and Hamlet discussion. I was setting it at like that time period. So in my head, but obviously you don't have time to flesh out all that. So just mm -hmm. short We're what, 50 years out? <laughs> what? <laughs> 50, 100 years out? Not too far off. Yeah, mm -hmm. there you go. It's all the same. They didn't have iPhones. Right. Well, yes. The next story. The Brit Pack were certainly ready for these two, Barrett. We were. We're doing, we're doing a good job. <laughs> Superb. <laughs> what have I done now? <laughs> we have no idea, Richard. I'm just going with the flow. <laughs> oh, it's 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 Lejeune's turn. I'm so glad I don't have that. Uh, is this actually your story, Chris? Can you confirm? Well, it's not going to be anyone else's, is it? It could it's be. Not. Who? Not. I mean, uh, Nano five thousand. Yes. Spoiler alert! <laughs> Are you sitting comfortably? Good. The Nana Bot five thousand scanned the kitchen for ingredients for dinner. She picked up the complete works of Shakespeare, but could not find it on the approved list of ingredients. Why am I getting feedback? I don't know. Maybe everyone else could mute. Um. But could not find it on the approved list of ingredients she had downloaded from the network. She scanned for an update to the list, but no new version was available. She would have to continue with what had been approved. The kitchen was not up to Nanobot's usual standards. She had not cooked for the family in some while, but she had her recipes and she would use them. The kitchen was a mess. They clearly had let someone else cook in here and it had not been taken care of. The crockery was swept up and put in the reformiomatic, where they were no longer cracked, chipped imperfections of their former cuppy selves, but reworked into a pristine state with a delicate process of laser. And well, Nanobot didn't need to know how exactly it worked and hadn't been programmed to understand. She hoped little Jimmy would enjoy the meal. It had been her favourite, but she had not been allowed to cook since before the event. The event had changed so many things, but mainly had stopped those neighbours coming around. Nanobot did not care for the neighbours. They acted like they were somehow better than the family. They were not better. They were worse. And yet, they had the smug satisfaction of pseudo-success. She was glad that they did not come around any longer. She returned to the cupboards. What the recipe usually called for was not in the pantry, and her shopper units still had not returned with supplies. She would have to improvise. The fact that all 12 of her shopper units were still unaccounted for was something of a concern. If her panic, circuit, if her panic circuits had not blown years ago, she would be having a full-on meltdown roundabout now. She scanned what was available in the house. The recipe called for meat, and the only available according to her rapid failing sensors, was human. She wasn't sure if human was acceptable to substitute, but she checked the approved ingredient lists and there was nothing to say it was not allowed, despite the download errors. She thought best not. Humans could be so prudish about who they ate. Nanobot was content with a firmware update every six months and never questioned it, but these humans, if the pineapples on their pizzas weren't just so they would flip out and cause an event. She had not liked the event. It was so bright and loud and radioactive. She had enjoyed how quiet had been since, but it made the family ever so antisocial. They hadn't left their panic room since it happened. Nana could only see them with her deep scans through the lead lining. She hadn't understood why they didn't feel the need to keep their lovely, fleshy exteriors. It was one of the things she found most charming about them. Just having bones showing under rotting clothes was not the statement piece they seemed to have assumed it to be. And as for not coming out anymore, well, that's just rude. Nano, Nanobot cooked the meal. The family wouldn't eat it. They never did anymore. And no one would know her secret ingredient. But she was... It, but it was... But she was here to cook for the family, and no matter how antisocial or irradiated they may be, she damn well was going to do it, even if those ungrateful shopper units didn't come home anymore. She would continue what she had been put here to do from now until doomsday. Again. 
Oh, Love it. Yes. Quite funny. amusing. Martin, were you writing a commercial for for Nanobots? Because I felt like you were writing a commercial. <laughs> I thought I was doing the opposite of that, if anything. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just like your sense of humour. It's. Uh... You are so kind. Wasn't too sure about the pineapple dog. I mean, dig. <laughs> oh, dig pineapple dig. Got it. Yes, there was subtext suggesting that uh, Richard caused the apocalypse. Yeah. I mean, that, could, that, is, that is a feasible thing to happen. <laughs> I could very well cause the apocalypse. I mean, the greatest <laughs> science fiction is based in truth. It is. <laughs> I saw a meme the other day that was two seals talking to each other, and one said, do you like my pineapple hat? And it was like, what? And then you see the shark underneath saying, hey, do you want one? And he goes, no, I don't like it with pineapple. <laughs> 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 well, that's pretty funny. Shannon has had to disappear briefly, bless him. But thanks wow. for coming along. We've saved the best stories until last. Actually, no, I think we're, we're about a, a, an even keel of awesomeness. And I have to say, from my point of view, the best stories have already been, really. It's a bit rude, isn't it, about my story? Yeah, but I don't mind about you, Richard. You're just Richard. You don't get insulted. <laughs> Dear me, right on that note, it's Richard. You say that, Colin, but you don't hear him cry. <laughs> he doesn't phone you up after bedtime. I don't phone well, you up after well, bedtime. Well, he tears away with bits of leftover pineapple pizza. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that is like heaven taking that to bed. Mm. Blubbing into the Instagram voice feature. <laughs> I could be doing a lot of work things into the Instagram voice feature. Martin, no one loves me. They say novellas aren't real writing. <laughs> you say novellas aren't real writers. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know why you're so sensitive about it, Richard. I said Nightmare Tenant was good. Yeah, you I didn't really review like it, did Nightmare you? Tenant. Well, Are we talking about Nightmare Tenant? This book? Yeah, I knew we'd have it there somewhere. <laughs> If you enjoy Nightmare Talent, you'll love his newsletter. And you can get this for free. In paperback? Wow, what a bargain. No, the paperbacks are special. Not for you. <laughs> right, shall we move on to the next um, thing, which is by the amazing Colin Clark. Oh, Lord. Okay. And is this actually your story? I just need to check at this point. This is indeed my story, yes. Oh, dear. Dearie me. Right, when you're ready, Colin, take it away. Okay, Koki. It was just about the biggest pan I'd ever seen. A humongous steel pot with a pair of woolly-clad legs under it. Of course, the legs belonged to my gran, not the pot, but it looked funny anyway. You need some help, gran? I reached out to pull the kitchen chair, chair out of her path as she headed for the cooker. Careful! ka -clang. The sound of pot meeting cooker top rang round the kitchen like the ringing of the doomsday bell, and I stuck my fingers in my ears as it echoed from every hard surface. Gran? Quit your engine, Gran said, popping her head round the pot and waving a large wooden spoon at me like a weapon. Careful indeed, she said, waddling towards me. I've been carrying old Bessie there from scullery to cooker for nigh on fifty years. Never trip once. I realised lip reading wasn't helping, so I took my fingers from my ears. Sorry, Gran. Uh, don't scroll it up when I'm halfway along a line. Sorry, Gran. <laughs> I lost all track then. Sorry, Gran. I was just trying to help. Apologising was always the best move with Gran. She had a quick temper, but it was over and done within a minute. Now she put the spoon down and gave a grin. You're a good lad, Billy. Do your old Gran a favour and get the big clay bottle from the pantry. The secret ingredient bottle? I was gobsmacked. No one but Graham was allowed to touch that bottle. Yep, reckon you're old enough now. I didn't wait for her to change her mind. Racing across the kitchen, I yanked the metal latch on the pantry door, kicking a stray rat out of the way, and then, taking a reverential breath, placed my trembling hands on the big clay bottle, feeling the liquid inside gloop 
as I lifted it carefully from the shelf. By the time I got back, Gran had already hooked and started lowering the meat on the pulley. As lean and beautiful a piece of beef as I'd ever seen. Of course, I knew this was just going in to render the fat for now. Nothing like beef fat to make the real joint sizzle with flavour. That and Gran's secret ingredient. Suppose you'd be wanting to know what my secret ingredient is now, Billy. She tied off the rope and let the, left the beef submerged and hissing in the broiling liquid. I wondered just how she'd managed to get it boiling that quickly, but more importantly, I was about to find out a secret only known to Gran's closest family and friends. Me, Billy Doppart, barely 16 and about to be given the highest honour a Doppart could get. The secret ingredient to Granny Doppart's Thanksgiving surprise. Give it here, Gran said, holding her hands up for the bottle. Let's get this stopper out. Incitement was buzzing through me as she pulled the cork out with a pop. Dun, dun, da. That's as far as I got. Ah, uh, nice. <laughs> That's good. Always leave them wanting more. I want to find out what's in the bottle, Colin. Yeah, well, that's okay. I want to find that out too. I don't know yet. I want to know where there is in the world where there's a, a cooker and a Thanksgiving. Yeah, okay. Well, it sounded like New Yorkshire. <laughs> New Yorkshire? It is near Yorkshire, actually. They have Thanksgiving there, but it's for, uh, you know, studies and things. But, uh, but yeah, <laughs> Thanksgiving just, just got put in because it happens to be yesterday. I know. I love how we're drawing the conversation. It's fun. Colin always throws in the best details, like kicking the rat out of like the best details, but just like <laughs> make the whole scene worth it. But they like don't mean anything, but they are the best. Merci. Yeah, I, I I could see that being like it's almost a, it's kind of like um, Coronation Street vibes in a way. Oh, there's no need to be rude. <laughs> Oh, no. It's kind of like you know, very, very provincial kind of yeah, yeah, kind of atmospheric. Your yeah. writing was so good; it was like a soap opera. Oh, thank you very much. One that's yeah. been going almost as long as I have. Yes. <laughs> oh dear me. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be quiet. I thought it would be horrible to me, even though I'm the host. Never happen. Okay. Right. What Natalie's piece from Instagram? Are, are you not reading today, Dicky? I'm saving the best till last because you're, you're, my piece is literally going to blow you away. And so is my story. <laughs> I just love how humble you are. Okay, yes, well, not being fun. Uh, the thing is... You know um, what he's going to say next, don't you? I have to blow my... No one's going to blow my trumpet unless exactly. I do. I've got to be my own, you know, biggest fan. And if you haven't done it already, subscribe to my newsletter. <laughs> do it now because I'm turning northern. Ah, <laughs> ah. I warn you, it's catching. Don't want to be doing that, lad. Hey, up, Chuck. We're going live on Tinternet. Tinternet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to put the big light on in a minute, then go on Tinternet. Oh, my God. I'm going to tea in a minute, Tom. <laughs> okay, who's going to read the, for the lovely Natalie, who's kind of vanished? <laughs> I think Margaret should because she has a very nice oh, reading. Are you voice. farting? It sounded like a trumpet. I couldn't tell who was making this noise. It was me. Colin trumpeting. was brassed off. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was. But okay. I think Margaret should read this really. It'll be funny. Barrett is married. So oh, oh, no, we're not going to go down that route, are we? That's what he said. I can read it. That sounds fine. Jolly good. Go ahead then. Um. All right. Let's see. I have to get real close to this. Okay. You know, you kids just don't appreciate good cooking anymore. If it isn't loaded with sugar, you want nothing to do with it, Granny said as she rolled out the dough. She laid the crust into the pie pan and sprinkled more flour over the dough. The air was dusty. But now, they all come for my pies. I've gotten first prize in the county fair three years running. She grabbed her butcher's knife and headed to the pantry. A teenager laid on the floor. Granny raised the cleaver up as she said, you won't get to learn the recipe, but you'll at least be a part of it. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh. No was, that the, uh, was that the mirror to Collins piece? Yeah. 
Natalie Shaw knows how to deliver a piece of flash fiction. Beginning, middle, end, bang. Exactly. That really worked. Even as a very short piece, I was like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, no, it was good. Really good. Well done. Very, very Thank great. you so Thank much you. for submitting it to us to read out. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you being part of it. Hopefully, Natalie will be part of a future flash aha in the future. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. Perhaps oh. in uh, December. Was that, a... French? was that his French contribution? The uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> We will be uh, next month having a very festive Richard Holiday edition. <laughs> <laughs> we are calling it the Christmas edition, aren't we? Yeah, the we war on Richard Holiday. coming. We're not actually going to go the oh, humbug that's, routine. Yeah, that's part of my erotica collection. I'm sorry. Holidays are coming. Oh dear Lord! Wow. Yes. <laughs> Fascinating tale about the holiday family. Okay. No, no one's yes, there. come come on our stream. It's a nice, respectable stream for all the family. Bloody, yeah. Uh, we never said that. It's you just know, as well got, you didn't. My Leslie Houston out with her kids listening to this, and there you are with this film. She's gone now. We're allowed to turn the I'm not surprised the way you've been going on. My mother yeah. asked where I was going to be on today, and I said, I don't know if it's if it's your flavor, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably not, yes. <laughs> My mom definitely goes back and watches these, at least CGL. But I think that's because she likes Barrett more than she likes me. So. Okay. <laughs> mom approved. Barrett is mom approved. Barrett yeah. is definitely mom approved. Yeah. Well, you, you're, you're doing a stream with some British guys? Like where your books are set? That'll be so charming. I'll watch that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. My lady now. Oh, it's you now, is it? Right, come on in. And I'm afraid that's all we have time for on <laughs> yes, uh, Flasher. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Good night from me. It's good night from them. Oh, same mood. I can't stop reading. <clears throat> Finally, Caroline had been ready. Rick had only died a few short months ago, but the wave of emotion had passed surprisingly quickly. That trip to the park with the remnants of his earthly form, tipped in the serene waters of the pond, seemed an age away when the sun still shone in the evenings, when the birds flocked across an ochre sky at 8 30 in the evening. Now, in the depths of the winter, only one man could warm her hearth. Smiling, she sighed, feeling her lower body turn to mush at his warmth. Want more no. coal, my love? Clive soothed. Let me feel those shoulders. Yes, they're tense. She snapped out of it. Tense? She was 68 years old. How much longer would she put up with this shivard? It's bad enough that Pete... Oh, that's must be Clive had basically bashed her door down straight after the funeral, lecherous toad, but she kept up appearances as he placed rugged, world-worn hands against her taut and springy flesh. He didn't half know how to give a woman a good rub, she had to admit. She purred like a satiated cat. Then she looked to the kitchen, the odour snaking up her nostrils, just as he snaked up her, the pie, the pie, don't you want some? He thought as he was already getting some, but she got up. He harumphed. Don't be like that, I told you. Family recipe. Worked on this for 40 years. Walking past the mantelpiece, she saw the photo of Rick from his youth, the good old days. She walked into the kitchen and nothing had changed. She reached after pulling the tea towel from the rack and looked to the oven. Beyond the dark doors, the glow of light and the eminence of radiant heat. She pulled the door open and pulled the bubbling mass of pastry and filling out and onto the worktop. Christ, you made me jump, she said. Clive stood there in the doorway. This your famous pie? Why, you want a slice, she said. He embraced her, and she let him, feeling his digits claw into her supple flesh. Of the pie, while it's hot, best kind of pie is the hot and steaming type. She ladled him a slice and spooned on a generous helping of her fresh whipped custard. It jiggled. Eat up, then you'll get some pudding. This isn't pudding. Christ, I love it, he said. She watched as his rotund belly vibrated and undulated as the guts within suckered down on her fresh pudding. He swallowed, grunting in the pleasure of the dessert. Then he coughed. 
something got your throat it's most but wait what the hell's this he screeched getting up what is that bloody dirt from the garden no worse the man you killed i told you a recipe 40 years in the making <laughs> i don't think this was a romance no, no, neither do I. I mean, I. there was like a twisted romance in there. No, romance has a happy ever after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going into like, like a romantic horror. Yes, or happy ever after for now. Yeah. The thing is, you resist it, but you're a natural. You're so good at the genre, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh. Very right, can I ask a quick poll of the audience who reads romances? Nah. <laughs> nah. Okay, just checking. Did you not feel your heart warmed by that story in the beginning? I felt my stomach churning at one point, <laughs> but that had nothing to do with romance. I rushed off to post it on the uh, Reddit men, male warfers writing female characters. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> you tell us one minute she's 68 and then say springy, taut flesh. Prize winning. Prize yeah, winning. Absolutely. I, I just think, you know. Great characterizations. Shane Austin meets Croydon. It's Croydon. <laughs> I kind of wanted to go for the idea that this this bloke had basically bumped off her husband so he could, you know, climb into bed with her, and then um, and then she has his re her revenge on him by serving her husband's ashes in the pie. That's not a romance, though. No, no, it's definitely not. No. <laughs> what you weren't paying attention? Oh, for God's sake! <laughs> 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 you definitely missed the pineapple and the tuna to your pizza. Oh. Right, I'll have to read it again then. No, no, it's all right. Yeah. You can catch the replay. Oh, <laughs> it sounds romantic, so we don't know what, 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 what he's into. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. Do you remember Just one, one, one have question. Have you ever Richard? seen that movie, People Under the Stairs? Should I have? It's a fabulous movie. But your romantic writing reminds me of the couple in People Under the Stairs. I just have one question. Yes, have you ever met an actual human woman? <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in what context, Martin? Any well, context. Other than like, it's in real life. Yes. Um, Possibly. Well, you uh, went to uni, so yes, you definitely have. Yeah, well, plenty of plenty of plenty of young things. Yeah, Barrett Richards romance was people under the stairs because it's if you high. remember the couple from people under the stairs, that woman was definitely one of them. <laughs> and I don't have a reference for I don't have a contact. You must look movie. It's a very good movie. I'm going to assume it's a very good flash fiction by the comparison to that very good movie. Oh, yes. It was good flash fiction. It just really, I wow. think, oh, romance. Good flash fiction. Went for the gusto. Yeah. I think the romance was perhaps... It feels like we've gone full circle where I'm kind of embracing the genre and uh, Dick is just ignoring it and doing his own thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can I say? You know, someone has to do it. Were the genres re reversed when this was the, the other way, the trend? Yeah, oh, I, I, I wasn't. I didn't. We didn't have it for the first couple, and then he uh, insisted, and I was a bit reluctant. Ah, as romantic as Dexter. Oh yes, for you, Caroline oh. Kepnes's book. You, I hear that's uh, romantic too. <laughs> a little twisty. I kind of like to think it's kind of like Dexter meets Mills and Boone. Mm. Mm. It sounded more like Dexter meets Mill on the Floss. I was going to say, so like Wuthering Heights? Is that where we're back yeah, to? Yeah, yeah. Wuthering Heights. Yeah. Revenge novel, right? Yeah. Revenge is a dish best served with oh, custard. With custard. Oh, I love like custard. See? <laughs> so, to be know. fair, Barrett, Barrett is a self-proclaimed romance hater, so... 
Well, that's not what Ricky tells me. <laughs> I don't think, oh, yeah, oh, oh, that is spicy. Yeah. Meow, Martin. What was that oh, sound? Oh, wow, wow. The Colin sound. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was another. Oh, oh, me, you. Sound effects. You're very good at the sound effects. I'm thinking Thank this you. is not human, but yeah. <laughs> hire him for your audio book today. He'll also <laughs> sing in the Ah, as long as they're set in Yorkshire or London. <laughs> Come down it. to pit foot to there. Ah, well, don't worry about it. See, that'd be funny. Martin, uh, Colin, not Martin's not like anyone. Colin's like the guy that does the sound effects out of um, uh, the Police Academy movies. Oh, no, I'm not. No, no. Uh, you, uh, you've never heard me do an electric guitar. <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure how to take this. <laughs> Ricky would be the first to say I'm about as romantic as Richard's flash. <laughs> but it was romantic in the first paragraph, wasn't it? No, no, it wasn't really. No. I logged on to uh, do the interview with Barrett last week and just saw him going, OK, now leave me alone till five. <laughs> Missed that. Did you record that? If only. I've been on those where you know he's been like, "Okay, I have a live stream now." Okay, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for him to do that interview with his mum. Uh, that's yeah. that's, lovely. that's going to be the cri- Christmas episode, isn't it? Did you guys watch the promo shoot where she kept giving him suggestions? Mm-hmm. That was she so called funny. me a proper writer. <laughs> That's more than he ever did. Dear me, mate. Well, Barrett is interviewing in 15 minutes the lovely Gary Thomas about all kinds of um, uplifting topics, including his autobiography. Good. <laughs> is it pronounced Thomas? Did I Thomas. hear that right? Thomas. Okay, just checking. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Thomas. He's got a massive toe. Gary Thomas. Yes. He's got a foot thing. <laughs> <laughs> Another oh, one of British romantic romance. ideas. Also not romance. Not a toe thing. Yeah. Foot fetish, no. No. Toe not ring. Ugh. Just what the idea it? of a toe ring just makes my skin crawl. Ooh. Get your crusty and full of dead skin and, and Oh, this has taken a dark turn. <laughs> um, how are we all feeling about tonight's fun and games? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving you my just admin scare yourself, <laughs> Richard. <laughs> Shall I just remove myself from the stream? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think there I've never go. had so much fun and frolics for ages. Excuse me. <laughs> Well, that's what been a, a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> Stephanie, why don't you tell the nice people where they can find more of you? Uh, I am on Instagram oh. and uh, Twitter, but mostly at CGL, uh, Critique Group Live, one of the three co-hosts of that. And if you have not joined the Critique Group Live Facebook group, Please join us. We have a ton of fun writing flash fiction and promoting ourselves. And Mm -hmm. I mostly stand back because I'm busy writing papers about uh, the Gospel of John these days. Seminarian by day. Excellent. Well, journalist by day, seminarian by night, creative fiction writer when I can. Ah. Um, (laughs) And the cracks. Yeah, there we go. Peggy, how about you? (laughs) Uh, Margaret. Um, so I, I blog on Patreon because I've left everything else behind. I video stream on my channel at Margaret Pernard and I have books available where books are available uh, from your bookstores even sometimes. And um, I'm on Twitter like all the time. So come at me there. I'll be happy to say hello. You do love a bit of Twitter, don't you? <laughs> Colin. Yes, you can find me all over social media like a rash. Uh, you can find me on AuthorTube. I do, I do occasionally do live streams. I also do videos. Uh, and CGLs the second Thursday of every month, and everyone should come along or submit work to it because it's brilliant. 
and the flash fiction prompts every week are brilliant and i won this week ha ha that's my bragging rights over and done with <laughs> so the question is colin have you been able to cash the gift card yet i haven't received a gift card yet never look a gift card in the mouth yeah, but I figure it's it's Thanksgiving on the 25th, and today's only the 26th, so really. Colin, you won, you won in a packed field, too. I uh, I won because I was the only submission that week. I won by default as well, which I was, you know, I'm still happy about winning by default. I'll take it, you know. <laughs> Wins a win at the end of the day. Yes, yeah, so I didn't can't, vote for me. I voted for Laura. But, uh... You can't spell win by default without the word win. <laughs> but yeah, CGL is magnificent. Everyone should submit and attend and come and watch it because it's great fun. And you should join the Facebook group as well. Oh yeah, why not? I did. And look how that look how far that's got me. <laughs> you put me into that tent in your living room with the with the flashy lights. Very impressive. Yeah. And me look and me little curtains and all well, me quilts on it's the really... wall for audio purposes. Well, it's nearly curtains for this stream, so I guess I should say goodbye. Never miss a cue. Love it, man. I never do. And you can so find more from me at youtube.com oh, slash Thank you, Martin. There you go. And bradleylejeune.com for the newsletter. Uh, fine. Okay, well, fine. Oh, I didn't <laughs> even put your ticker up, Martin. There you go. <laughs> What's the file door from? Um... He's gone and muted himself. <laughs> oh my goodness. You've taken us out now. Hang on, no, we're still live, Martin. Oh, we are still live, Martin, indeed. You have okay, enabled we're still, we're still auto started. stop. Yeah. You did enable auto stop in YouTube, did you? I didn't do any of that. Rich you just told me I was in charge. Oh, right. I did not. So if life. you haven't done auto stop, you're going to have to go into YouTube and stop the live stream from there. Stop I it, am going to say thanks to our wonderful guests, Colin, Stephanie and Margaret. Thanks for enduring this last two hours of absolute <laughs> professionalism. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hope, hopefully we'll see you again soon, if you can bear it. Okay, that, 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 that subtle nod will do. That's enough. <laughs> yeah. Good enough. That we'll was just a look shocked, like being in a car headlights, really. Yeah. Again? Really? Okay. More of this. Um, so thanks to everyone for joining us. Thanks to everyone for watching. Thanks to everyone for submitting. And we shall see you later on. Goodbye. Arrivederci. Goodbye. It's a goodbye from me. It's a goodbye from him. <laughs> <laughs>